James White, he criticizes the, uh, the book that you hold in your hand, thinking that your book has errors. The Bible has errors. And then he tries to point out, so he claims to believe the Bible is the word of God, but he believes, but he doesn't really believe that because he thinks that the words in your King James Bible can be corrected. So, as Bible believers, we believe in one book called the King James Bible. It is the true word of God. Amen. And you got so many tons of different Bibles, right? That's why the Muslims, the liberals, they have the right to say that, you know, you got nearly 200 or more modern translations of the Bible, and the words all differ from each other. So then how can you believe in a book that consistently makes mistakes that you have to keep changing and changing and changing? Now, James White and modern scholars, this is how they argue. They argue that it's not really that different. No, they are different. Yeah. And when you catch them on something different, then they're going to argue this way. Well, the main important doctrines are not taken away. So even though there are differences you can find, they're very minor. It doesn't change the main doctrine of Christianity. That's going to be definitely disproven. If you change a word, you do change a doctrine, Amen. and eventually even a salient doctrine that you don't know. Bar Ehrman was right. You change an important word, you can change a whole meaning, which can change an important doctrine. And that's what Jimmy White tries to say, no, 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 it's not, it's not. Out of his own mouth, he actually does. And I'm not talking about the blood atonement right here. I'm not talking about the doctrine of salvation by faith without works. I'm not talking about the doctrine of the pre-tribulation rapture. I'm not talking about the doctrine that works are not counted for salvation. I'm not talking about the doctrine of the deity of Jesus Christ. You know what I'm going to talk about? I'm talking about where you confuse God with Satan. Mm -hmm. Now that should be really bad right there. Yeah. Now he actually said it. It's caught out of his own mouth. And I, I don't know if he's going to take down that video one day or if he's going to take back what he said. But in his other videos, he seems to confirm it. But we're going to look at John chapter 1 and 2 Corinthians 4. First of all, go to John 1, 1 and 2 Corinthians chapter 4. So he has an excuse against Isaiah 14 where Lucifer is called the morning star and Revelation 22 Jesus is called the morning star. So, ooh, you call God Satan right here. No, you're misunderstanding. Well, and right here there is absolutely no misunderstanding. He confused God with the devil right here. Wow. We're going to look at John chapter, or, or switch it the other way around, excuse me, switch it the other way around. But we're going to look at John 1.1 1, 1 and 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. First of all, we got to look at this side. So, the Jehovah Witnesses and Muslims, they're going to try to prove that Jesus is not God because they refuse to believe Jesus is God. So, one of their arguments is found in John chapter 1 and verse 1. The Bible shows right here, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was who? God. Alright, this is the greatest proof text on the deity of Jesus Christ. Because in John 1.1, 1, 1, who is the Word, folks? It's God. Jesus Christ. And then the Word, as one brother said right here, He is God. So they know the Word is Jesus. And then that verse plainly called Jesus, or the Word who? God. So they got to get rid of this. So how they get rid of this is that because the Greek article ha, which means the, so I don't want to bore you with Greek, so I'm going to make it as simple and quick as I can. So I'm not going to give all kinds of technical details right here. For the viewer's sake, I'm just going to make it simple and easy. Those of you who are more learned in Greek, I'm sure you can f add more explanations and details. So the dummy version is this. So in Greek, you got to understand that usually... When we talk about a capital God, the true God of the Bible, we usually put the article the before it. So you'll usually see the article ha or other forms of article. If you don't have the article before God, then it's going to be translated as a God. So meaning not the true God. So that's how Greek works. Now in John 1.1, 1, 1, what you're going to notice, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. So that part of the capitalization is correct. But then the second part, you're going to find out, and the Word was God. There is no article the right there in Greek. 
So thus it should be properly translated, according to Jehovah Witnesses and some Muslims, as a God. That's why when you look at your New World Translation, the Jehovah Witness Bible, they translate that as a God. Now, instead of boring you with Greek about predicate nominatives and why the article is unnecessary, I mean, you've got to realize this. If you study Greek grammar, which is beyond, I mean, they only know basic Greek grammar. If you go just a little bit intermediate or beyond the basics, the article, you got tons of explanation that can go several pages long concerning the article for God. All right? It can go several pages long. But besides this Greek explanation of the predicate nominative, that's why the word the is not necessarily used in the translation right here, because it would seem repetitive, etc. But aside from that, where you have to differentiate the subject and the predicate nominative, and some of you are lost, blah, 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 all right? Only I or other people who knows Greek might understand what I'm talking about. So I'm going to make it simple right here for the viewers. John 1.18. You don't need the article the to prove it's a true God. That's the point. That's the easy way. The easy way is, it's not true, you have to have the all the stinking time, all right? Just by context, and that's an undoubtable fact in all translations. How you find a proper translation is by context. And when you see the idea of the context, you can find out who it's talking about, and then figure out who it is, and then find the proper translation. Context is an undeniable fact, in translating. Look at John 1.18. The Bible says, no man has seen what? God. God at any time. That's the true God. Guess what? In Greek, when it says, no man has seen God, there is no article the. Mm. That same chapter. Were the Jehovah Witnesses honest right here? John 5.18. Uh, coincidentally, John 1.18 for all I know. Anyways, so the point is, is that the article is not mentioned there. No need. So that's how Greek translation works. You can just obviously tell who's the right God just by context. Now, James White, in his great zeal of Greek, what he does is that he makes this mistake. Now go to 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4. So some smart Alec, some smart idiot, try to use 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 to show that, that the translators of the Bible, they were picking and choosing. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4.4. 4. In whom the God of this world. Who is that referring to? Is that Satan or God, people? Satan. Uh, wait, did you say God or Satan? It's Satan, right? Satan. It's Satan. Is that the true God of the Bible? No. Nope. Okay. Let me ask you again. Don't be dumb now, all right? Is that the true God of the Bible? No. No, it's not. It's not. Now, this smart aleck, he tries to use, so because the article the is mentioned right there, it should be the true God of the Bible. So, the translators were so biased in picking and choosing. How you obviously debunk that is context. In whom the God of this world hath what? Blinded? The minds of them which believe not, this God is contrasted with, lest the light, so this God of this world is blindness, darkness, is contrasted with, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of who? God, God should shine unto them. That other God is contrasted. Mm -hmm. So obviously the first God is contrasted. That should be plainly obvious. By the way, just because the is mentioned before God, it does not have to be the true God all, all the time. Exactly. There's a verse that goes, the God of forces. Satan is known as the king, the king of all the children of pride. He is, the Bible says, ye are of your father, the devil, the lust of your father, ye will do. The prince of the power of the air, Ephesians. Just because there's an article before something, that does not have to make it genuine. Yes, Satan is known as the God, but the God of what? A dark, evil thing. So it could be the God of darkness, it could be the God of sin, it could be the God of this world, the God of forces, the God of demons, etc. It could, go, it could work that way. So by the context of something dark and evil, we're not going to think it's the true God right there. God is not the author of sin, as James chapter 1 pointed out. 
Oh, no, White didn't make that mistake. Yes, he did. Some of you are guessing. He pulls out some Greek scholar, and he says, and he gives a convincing argument, a pretty convincing argument, that this God of this world, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, is talking about God. And very briefly, let me just mention in regards to the 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 passage, if you'd actually look at that, you would see that it's not parallel at all, syntactically or grammatically. And in fact, a, a good friend of mine by the name of Don Hartley has written an excellent work that addresses the issue of who really is the theos of 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. And he makes a pretty strong argument that we should read that text as a judgment text and that it is God who is in reference there. But remember, capitalization, things like that, all English issues of capitalization, those are editorial things. DDOT and this individual are saying that we were changing our scriptures. We've changed nothing. <laughs> I would, he shows that, okay? I showed you the clip. Uh, I showed you the clip. And you'll find out right here that he just admitted right here that this can be referring to the true God of the Bible. Now, do you believe that different words in your Bible are a big deal after that? Amen. I mean, despite of all the debates that James White did to try to prove it's not a big deal, it doesn't change big doctrine, doctrine. Look, when you confuse Satan with God, I think that's a major problem right Amen. here. And James White acts so smart with his Greek and Hebrew knowledge and pretends that he knows what he's talking about. And God, what does he do? He used the wisdom of this world and he uses that to fool him. That's why the Bible says the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. What did the Bible say about that pride and that wisdom of this world? He'll use that to ensnare them and deceive them. And that is a perfect picture of James White. He's the perfect epitome example yeah. of a deceived, smart person. Amen. And if he's not the evidence of God's fruit, where your own pride and wisdom deceives you into something dark and you can't even see it, I don't know what it is.